to give a little intro about me, uh, I'm Micah Echnapura. I work at the Museum of Natural History for the Open Space Project. And uh, I'll say about the Open Space Project in a minute. But, um, you know, to kind of steal Jeff's line from yesterday, uh, you know, Open Space is a NASA funded project and we give it away for free. And my, my job is to help you use it. So if you want to use Open Space and I can help you use it, then you reach out to me and it's my job to help you. So it's not like I'm doing you a favor and this and that. And so it's like, it's my job. So I would encourage anyone who has any desire to use Open Space to reach out to me, to email me, to get in touch, to join our Slack or anything. Uh, and thank you very much, Sarah. She, some people can testify that, you know, whenever you need some help within one to 24 hours, I should be writing you back uh, with some help. Uh, so that was a little bit about me. And so uh, I'll just tell a little bit about open space and I'll start off and I'm just going to share my screen. And I like, normally I would like clean up my desktop and have some stuff all laid out. And I just thought, Hey, that's not what their planetarium looks like. When you go to your planetarium, if it's anything like mine, you got all sorts of crap on the desktop and things people have been putting there and collecting there over the years, including pictures of a cat or, you know, a screenshot of my passport or, you know, some icons or whatever. And so I thought, hey, this is just be like what it's like in a planetarium. Uh, and so, you know, what is open space? Uh, hopefully a lot of you guys know, but for you, those of you who don't, I thought I would just throw in a couple quick bit so it is our our tagline is uh, open source data visualization software for presenting nasa data in immersive environments and you say i say that to my friends and they're like what the heck do you work on and i say it's like a big video game of space for the planetarium and they're like oh cool you know and but to you guys i would say that open space is akin to the interactive portion of a lot of the software and uh, packages and suites that you have on your planetarium already. And so, you know, why do I say it like that? Because open space is a lot of great stuff and it's also not a lot of things, you know? And so what is it? It's that interactive portion of software that you've seen a lot. And what isn't it? It's not a video player. It's not a sound. It does not make sound, right? So, to, you know, there's we don't have any way to play anything on your speakers, right? Um, and so, you know, what also is it not, is it finished and perfect? And so it's a development project that we're working on, on a grant with a bunch of universities. And you can see we're on our version 17.2 and, and we have a lot of versions. Uh, I would say that anyone who wants to, please feel free to just, uh, unmute yourself and ask anything if you would want to. Uh, so. I mentioned it's an open source project. We have our GitHub with all the code and you can see everything that we're doing. You can interact with the team and give us feedback and you can see we have discussions with people. Um, well, Micah, yeah. I mean, since you offered it, I am curious how many people have actually tried open space and, and how many people haven't? If, if yeah. you, yeah, has anyone, has anyone not even heard of open space? Yeah. Just please say right. so. I'm, I'm really interested. I okay. Me as well. We had one I've or two I've heard people. of it, but I've never dove into it. Okay. I mean, that means the, the PR is working. So great job, Micah. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, you know, even if uh, not everyone has used it uh, or seen it, a lot of people have heard of it. Uh, and so, you know, um, aside from showing maybe some resources that we have on our webpage, I thought I would just go right in and show it. Now, Normally I would have kind of like a presentation laid out and set up and started and ready to go. Um, and I do have a little prepared stuff that I want to prepare and show in a minute, but I thought I would just kind of launch it up and just give you guys the real experience. This is, if you downloaded open space today and double clicked on it, this is what you would get. And, you know, uh, even, you know, when I was testing out some things earlier, I noticed that, oh, today's earth image isn't loading and I thought oh boy I should really or this is actually yesterday's earth image maybe I should just start at the day before yesterday so they get a real earth image and then I thought well that's not the open space experience if they started open space today on their home computer they would get this and they might say what the heck is going on right and so you know we we actually like, load the data right so the data was incomplete today. exactly and there's nothing we can do about that 
Exactly. So all we can do is maybe go back one day and go to a day where the data was complete. And so this is actually loading the VIIRS satellite daily uh, image layer from uh, NASA Gibbs. And so it updates in open space every day as you change the day. And there is actually some days, such as yesterday, where the image doesn't complete. And they'll actually sometimes go back and fill it in, and other times they will uh, not be able to, and that depends on whether it was just an image processing error, a data processing error, did something go wrong with the image. And, you know, we used to even start open space at today, and then the world was never complete because today's picture is never done. And so uh, we decided to start with yesterday, which I would actually say on 95% of the days of the year, it's usually complete. Um, and so, you know, this, uh, what we call globe browsing in open space is one of our favorite features and features that we use a lot of and, and we put a, a, a fair amount of work into. And this is the ability to put different layers on the globe and interact with them and use them differently. And so here on Earth, I have a little bit of, uh, you know, we have a couple of different layers built in that, you know, I could turn on one of these and we'll see if it, um, if it comes up and loads here. Oh, there it was. So we had a sea ice concentration layer. Uh, and so here it's, you know, uh, combining with our other layers and showing us the sea ice and I can get a little info about it. And this comes from the NASA worldview and you can find out some more info about it. Um, but, you know, we, we get a lot of layers that we have kind of built in, but we also have ones that we can add and we get ones for the earth from NASA Gibbs and we get ones that are hosted on our server and we get ones that are hosted on uh, NASA servers. And I just thought uh, I would take us to the moon and, and show us a little bit about the moon and look at how we can uh, maybe blend one or two of the layers together. So here we are looking at the moon and the first thing I'll say is you'll see that, you know, we darken the globes based on the date. And so if I want to see a different portion, right, I can, I can change the day but we also just have our ability to just let you see it. Um, so, you know, on the moon, maybe I might want to uh, combine some layers that uh, give me some elevation information. And, you know, this is one of these ones that uh, I love to turn on because visually I feel that it gives me a lot of information, but we actually get a lot of... Uh, discussion from uh, our events team and our public people when we turn on a layer like this because as we heard earlier today what are the colors what am i seeing there's no bar there's no legend and so you know when we're turning on layers like this we often really have to think about explaining it and the interaction with the audience uh you know i kind of assumed that everyone here in this audience would know what it was when i turned on this uh height elevation layer and what the colors meant, right? But maybe, you know, maybe that was an incorrect assumption. Um, so I'll just also, you know, take us quickly to Mars and, and talk about uh, how we combine some of the different data sets and how we kind of use them. And, and you know, uh, I'll talk about, uh, you know, it, how I use them interactively. And, and I think it is actually a really great distinction that someone made in the chat earlier about me interacting with the software versus a uh, presenter interacting with the audience, right? And those are often when I think of interactive planetarium presentation, I'm thinking interactive with the software, not playing a video. Uh, and so when I say, you know, how I'm going to use this interactively, I mean how I'm manipulating it as I use it rather than, than talking about it uh, with the audience. But maybe we can combine a little bit of both. So hopefully everyone knows we're looking at Mars here. And uh, maybe you guys know what this famous canyon is called. Um, but can maybe Micah, some, yeah. Micah, um, can, can open space do multi-projector systems yet? Oh yeah, so that's okay. actually what it was built for. You know, uh, it's kind of funny, right? Uh, I came to this project after it had started and, and I thought, oh my God, this is so amazing. And we use it in our dome and 
And after I was working on this project for about six months, I saw eyes on the solar system and I used it and I said, wow, they're so much more polished than, than our software and they have almost the same stuff. Why does NASA pay two different teams to make this stuff, you know? And, and they were like, well, eyes doesn't work in planetariums. Open space works in planetariums, you know? And uh, I was like, oh, well, okay, yeah, that's a great reason. We want to be able to show all this stuff in planetariums, right? And so uh, planetariums maybe are just fisheye and a lot of things can work in that, but on these multi-channel projection systems, that's the most complicated type of setup. And, and you know, that's one of the main reasons we made open space is to be able to show this content on these multi-channel systems. One of the resources that we're hoping to make in conjunction with some people is when would you want to use this? When would you want to use that? What, how could you use the different pr products and platforms in your education, right? So maybe you want to use open space in your planetarium, but you can use eyes on your website and have the same content that people are going to see in their planetarium. And it's all kind of, it's all data from NASA, right? So it's all very similar stuff. I just thought I would take us quickly to a nice little spot on Mars. And then uh, we'll just breeze through one or two things that I wanted to show afterwards. So I would say if anybody can see one of these postage things right here or here or here or here or here, just call out on the left of the screen or the right of the screen, please, and I'll go to one of them. Left. In the middle. Left. Okay. And we'll go visit here, right? And so here is where we are combining different resolution maps of the planet and I'm um, adding my uh, high resolution layer with my low resolution layer but since I want to you know add some more context to people I'll turn on my middle layer and then you know here I'll, I'm at a high-rise image and of course it's loading uh, and I could even turn on the elevation model which is loading but maybe some people might say well you know like this one is looking a little brighter than the other one, and, and this one's actually matched in a little good, but if you had a spot you wanted to go to, you could kind of adjust it, and you could take your maps and, and maybe manipulate them a little bit and make it so that they look the same and you had a little more seamlessness. Or maybe you just want to make this one pop a little more and you just want to see some more detail. You can even just bring that up for your case because you want to go there. Um, so since uh, everything takes me a little bit longer than I thought, I'm just going to blast through to a couple other things I wanted to show, which is I did want to show some new things that we put on our Open Space Hub. So this is a website that we just made uh, a couple months ago where we can upload some assets that we are getting from people in the community, upload assets that we are working on and preparing that are maybe either not as complete to put in the main release, not ready, or maybe just not deemed as uh, worthy, uh, or not as uh, fully um, baked. So here's a cool one. Since we were talking about volumetrics, I wanted to show this one. So I had already downloaded the data for this one, so it should add to open space relatively quickly. Normally, you would uh, actually have it added for when you start up open space and it would synchronize the data. Uh, but that was a, co a cool part of the sun that I wanted to put in. So let's just Micah, go You're using open. the default scene, right? I am using the default scene for everything because I just wanted to show what would happen when you start up open space. The only thing I've added is now this heliosphere part of my menu came because I hit import asset here. That wasn't there when I started. Would to um, just a, a regular fisheye for those people who have never used it and who are wondering, like, well, like how does this apply to my dome? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let me just briefly just scroll us through this great, uh, oops, uh, this awesome little animation of a coronal mass ejection that we have here that I can kind of scrub us through. This is with data that comes from the CCMC uh, at Goddard, or I could, like, uh, play us in real time and watch it play uh, and I could maybe jump to the start and watch it play uh, and you know we are one of the reasons we made open spaces so we could work with these scientific teams and constantly add new stuff like this so uh, this is the first part of a bunch of stuff we'll be adding from them um, I was going to show one other but I will 
so I don't run out of time, address Jeff's uh, comment, which is basically when I started Open Space, he mentioned the default scene, which I picked, which gives me different content. But we also have different window modes. And here's my custom ones, but we have some open space built in ones. And so if you want to run on full screen on your computer, you pick full screen 1080. If you want to run a fisheye, you pick single fisheye. If you have a, a dome with a warped mirror or a, one of these inflatables, you pick the spherical mirror. Um, if you just want to run it regular on your computer, you pick it just on your computer. Equa rectangular GUI, this is the one if you want to stream to YouTube 360. And so we have a lot of different types. And of course, you could also make your own. So I have an anaglyph one for just these uh, red, red, blue glasses. I have a 4K one for my 3D TV. Uh, and so depending on what type of configuration you're looking to do, we would work with you to help you set it up in your dome, in your fisheye, in this projection, in my, you know, cave or wall or room or video wall. Or I just helped someone at a small museum in North Carolina. They had just a little four by four, a uh, two by two of TVs, you know, and they had two computers, one running each thing. And they have a now they have an exhibit of a video wall just with two computers and four screens. Yeah, and if anyone has any questions, I'd be happy to take some. Um, also, you know, uh, if not, I can just mention a few things that I didn't get to, which is that we are uh, we have a Slack channel which you can join right from our website, um, and I would encourage you if you're interested to join it and you know uh, write your messages in. And uh, I will definitely um, respond to you. Sometimes some of our other developers, but it's usually me. I'm kind of our like uh, assigned uh, community. Yeah, that was going to be my question of how much you're 100% you're open space. You're not doing anything else. Yeah, yeah. So I'm actually, you know, one of the few people on the project who is 100% open space. And so uh, it actually gives me this really great like affordance to prioritize our users, which I, you know, um, I, even when I first started, I previously did a bunch of stuff for our museum in addition to the open space stuff. And, you know, then sometimes it takes it away from the project because, oh, well, we have an important presentation at the museum or we have the, the donors coming or the, you know, this uh, board of trustees or whatever it is, right? but I've actually gotten myself away from a lot of that stuff. And so basically as much time of my time that, that the users need, it goes to them. And then any time I have left, I do some development afterwards. And so um, to that point, if anyone is looking for support from a different time zone or something like that, I'm always available to help you at what might be nighttime for me. And because I don't have a different part of my job it's like I can just take off three hours the next morning or something like that. So, uh, you know, uh, in Fisk in Colorado, he could only work with me after their dome was closed. And so uh, he said, can you help me at 9 p.m. on Thursday nights, right? And I was like, well, that's 11 p.m. for me. So I'm starting the help at 11 p.m. And we finished at 5 a.m., I think, you know, but I just didn't come in the next day. And so... Uh, I would say I'm always willing to kind of work with you guys around your schedule rather than uh, I can only help you, you know, Monday through Friday, nine to five Eastern or something. And Mikey, you said open space doesn't do any sound at all, at all? Correct. We have zero sound output. Uh, oh. One comment I'll make about that is that one of the awesome things about the way open space is developed is that we get these master's students in uh, uh, like, graphics and media technology to do their master's thesis project by adding features to the software. So every year we have about two or three different groups of students who do that. And uh, about once every two years, one of those projects gets added into the main software when it seems you know, good enough and finished and complete and yada, yada, yada. And so uh, we did have a sonification project that they did which was cool. And uh, so we do have a build that it, I think it, it wasn't max MSP, but it was open. 
uh, it was a different it was a different one of these sound engines that it communicated with, so it would pump out these sound events, and then the sound engine could generate sound based on it. Uh, so <laughs> we have done a little bit of research into sonification, so to speak, and we will we actually plan to do some more on it. Um, but that's still also kind of different, I think, than a lot of people think when they think of sound for a planetarium program, they think of like maybe sound effects or playing an uh, audio clip or something. I should ask Sarah then. Sarah, what do you all do for audio then if you're using it in your dome? So we, um, we really don't do much with audio other than just us talking over it. Um, and that's basically how we've always used our uh, programs like we, we used to be Uniview until it crashed and that's why we're kind of forced into open space and so Micah has been very helpful um, but but yeah so we don't really do much sound but if we do sound then it's just something that we're playing in a media player or something outside of that so it's just something that we control besides but we don't do a lot of that okay I mean that sounds totally reasonable you know now that I'm thinking about it how much audio, audio do I really do, right? Um, I mean, Micah, can you show whether or not you can import 360 videos? Yeah, and so I'll just say quickly, we don't actually play video of any kind, uh, which is something that we have had some feedback on and are considering. Right now, I can only import a 360 image and I can go browse it like a Google Street View, but I can't import a 360 video, nor can I even just play like a regular mp4 video or anything in open space do a flip book right <laughs> yeah yeah That's we right. can do that and we do do that sometimes just like change the day on the earth very fast and it looks like it's animating 